Okay, so it is officially seven o'clock for my Apple phone. So we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Um, and I would like to introduce myself again, for those who just joined us, my name is Carla Gonzalez. I'm Director of Admissions at the College for Creative Studies. And with us today, we have Sandra Olave, Chair of Interior Design. Um, and she is going to uh, present to you information about our program so that you can learn more about what interior design is, but also specifics around what our students do in our program. So welcome everybody and welcome Sandra. Well, thank you, Carla. It's, I, I kind of miss not seeing everybody's face. So kind of, um, it's a little bit different that way. Um, typically when we teach, we have the interaction with people. So it's a little bit different. So bear with me as I go through. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about interior design, the program itself, and what we find and how do we teach throughout the four years and what are our expectations and what do we see that industry is requiring from us. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is the soft skills. We're going to start with the industry. Where's the industry is that? What exactly are they looking for? And part of it is those soft skills that we kind of develop. One of the most important one is the leadership roles and how do you build and put teams together and work with teams. In the interior design, you have to work with construction teams, architects, designers. Um, you would also be working with graphic designers, environmental graphics. So you kind of have to lead and support all those teams towards a goal, an ultimate goal. So you're kind of the glue in that sense. And resilience, because these days we've been asked to change in many ways. We've been asked to change the way we work, our environment itself, how we respond to the environments. And it, whether it's work, home, now it became one. And we're looking at how do we respond to new environments now? How do we make sure that human is safe? And that um, when we're designing spaces, we're responding to that safety net of, of those environments. The next one is kind of more focused on the job skills, the design concept, generating a concept, develop the concept, the material and the trends, how to add it informs the research and the concept of design. And then documenting all the design, the design documentation, the construction documents, and being able to fulfill the whole process to develop your idea, to communicate your idea, and to sell your idea. The main digital skills that we teach in the program, all the Adobe suites, the package, we have the Photoshop, uh, you're rendering, you're applying Photoshop to it, you're, you're playing a little bit back and forth with the software. So illustration, it's a, the software illustrator, I'm sorry. It's very critical because you're putting your presentations in it, you're doing it, building them in design, and then you build all the presentations and bring all your information towards that. AutoCAD is very, very critical for our industry as it allows you to do a lot of 2D and you start to have the, the initial foundation for 3D, but we're not quite sure doing um, 3D in CAD. We move then to Revit. Revit handles 3D and 2D, both areas. And Revit today allows us to quickly communicate. It's building information modeling. So once you're building on Revit, your architect could be seeing the changes you're making and how it's impacting his work. At the same time, the engineer through a cloud. So all of this communication models are happening as you're working through. So you could digitally, virtually work with a team the way we have to do today, actually working virtually with people. We actually could do that from our work, from an essence, and we could be sending warnings about those changes and communicating those with the whole team. Again, the teamwork. SketchUp, we, it's a software that is mainly for renderings to kind of demonstrate how you get those renderings out, how do they, they communicate the final glow of your design. And you'll see some samples as we go through. And finally, Enscape, which is the VR, the virtual, the goggles, the being able to walk through this space, seeing it upside down, 360. You wanna feel the environment in a digital space before it goes into construction. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about alumni, where they are. I have a, a few of them that I'm going to present to you today. They're very different path and tracks. And even though that we're the interior design discipline, our institution and the way we, the department works, we have different tracks. And you'll see how those tracks are impactful in their career. So the first one um, is Julie. Julie is a creative designer, advanced for color and 
and materials and specific to sustainable materials. So Julie actually works at General Motors. This is her new collection of material board and her car is coming out actually in two weeks. So if you follow General Motors design, you're gonna see some of her Buick uh, development in it. And then she also has um, a side company that does jewelry and metal jewelry. Again, that's kind of the collaboration that happens at CCS where you are taking metal classes, you're developing material, you're working. So you have the ability to have different paths. The next one I wanna show you is Cassie Clark. She's a senior creative director for Cernowski. She builds and works with exhibit design. And here's a sample, she, um, the company now is in Piano, Texas. Here's a sample of the Buick actually exhibit, and oh, I'm sorry, Cadillac exhibit. And you could see how um, all those exhibits that go typically in the Cobo Hall, now they're in New York and so on, she's part of them. And here we have Ashley. Ashley works with Nike in color and materials. She's very specific about developing materials for footwear design, sport footwear. And she's, here's her sample as a student work. Currently, um, her uh, design are just coming out. So we won't see a little bit of her collection till a year from now where we could start showing out to the public. And this is Daikia. Daikia works as a senior designer for Starbucks. For, she actually did it for nine years. And now this year she became the design director for her own company. Here's some of her work she did. So as you could see, I went through a variety of color materials, exhibit design, A and D architectural and design, and so on. So hospitality, healthcare, all of those are part of the commercial A and D but there are different tracks that you could develop on. Color and material, typical student has a minor, whether it's in fiber, metal, smith. There's always one minor either in the craft path. So now let's go into the student work, the interior design department student work. And here's a couple of the senior, the senior presentation. So um, our seniors work in healthcare and trying to see how the mental health was critical for this particular senior that I'm showing you because every senior had a different thesis. But this one was very concerned about our mental health and the fact that um, mental health doesn't even get the attention right away, but we need environments to be suitable and to be able to connect. So for her biophilia, connecting with nature was very important. So I'm gonna now um, share the screen to show you a little bit her video. Make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, um, Carla, if you could, uh, I'm gonna play it. If you, if sound is an issue, please let me know.
So you could see um, a little bit how this video expressed more the walkthroughs and you could actually connect with the space, the meaning of what the student wanted to do and, and how could she sell the idea even though that if she's not there, if she physically is not in the space, she could actually tell the story. The video speaks for itself. Let me see what I did wrong. Oh, that's better. Can you hear me? Okay, good. I'm sorry, I apologize. So I, what I was saying was that once you see the video, you actually have a walkthrough. You could see the student, how they're telling the story, how the storytelling goes about, how the project is, the meaning of the project, the environments, the connection between the environments, and how as a holistic environment becomes a sellable idea without the student being there to present and so on. So here's another rendering. This is actually um, a junior student. And you could see how the ap application of materials, how selling the idea, the, the ceiling, the connection, the juxtaposition of color and materials is important when you're building an environment to be able to be eloquent about how is it going to manifest. This is a more of a commercial setting than office space with a little bit of um, dining. And here's more of a conference table uh, where it sits about six people in, in the environment. So this one over here is um, junior level. It's a collaboration with a group called um, CAP. It's a community arts and partnerships from CCS. They work with um, a couple of students in the area of Detroit. And what the students wanted to do was an, an exhibit to celebrate their 50 years anniversary. So here's a sample of how they build the, the information, the color palette, the trends, and here we could see how, what the rendering looks like and what the space. So again, I'm gonna go back and show you a quick, this quick video that will show us how the space, the final space came about. So did I do this right? Boom. Oops. Sorry. Oh. Apologies. This. All right. So this is Cap. I hope you could still hear my voice. And then Cap will take us through this quick exhibit. It was a collaboration between communication design and interior design. So there's no sound here. This is inside the building of CCS. You see, I'm sorry, I apologize, it's 20 years, not 50. <laughs> they celebrate the past, the present, and the future. And here are samples of what the community the students do, what their product looks like, their, their artwork looks like, and then the collaboration, what it means to them, the hands, it means the, the language of collaboration. And if you look at the spots on the floor, those are indications of space boundaries. Right now we have to because of COVID, we have to be very aware of what's that distance, how do we proclaim that distance again, and how do we talk about proxemics, which is that what we feel that is more of a close distance versus a large distance. Then you could see how the students between communication design and, and interior design work in that graphic language to be able to kind of conduce you through the space, attract you to certain images, look at the wayfinding, and have a sense of how the 3D and 2D connect and communicate a whole thesis, or in this case, the, the CAP, the collaboration. So we kind of want the exhibit to really take the end user and walk them through a journey and really demonstrate what the final outcome is. So here you could see the sample, the student work around the walls, and again, the actual simple, it's a simple, very nice and very conducive exhibit. So hopefully we'll have this up and running in about September at CCS. So I'm gonna jump back now to our presentation. Oops, what did I do? I apologize, I got out.
All right, so at CCS, um, in general, and the interior design department does it a lot, we do sponsor projects where we have a company that will come to us and request a collaboration in a project. This particular one was a collaboration with DPL, Detroit Public Libraries. What we were thinking was, you know, the, mobile, the libraries in Detroit get to an audience, but not all the community how can we make sure that those libraries get to communicate with the actual reach out to all the community so the students develop this mobile library that actually walks through detroit or it gets landed in certain areas depending on on the specific community and serves as a library for about um a month in within the within the year one month where it would be public um for the public they will come in, they would have access to Wi-Fi, they would have certain online books. And this actually serves as a mobile, small section of the library. And it was very successful. This particular one that I'm showing you, it was a team of three. They were looking at some elements to be built. So, but the end of the client, which was Quicken Loan and Detroit Public Libraries, what they ended up doing was mixing a little bit of two teams and and developing one. So actually it becomes real projects that they implement and they implement a lot of the information that the students are providing. This one over here is, I'm gonna show you a complete sample. So here's the 15 weeks, we do a full set blown project. This is a sophomore level project. So second year, by the time you're in second year, you're doing this. And it's like for the fur welding, for uh, far well building, I'm sorry, in Detroit. And the project was in collaboration with a group called Saxe Constructions. And the idea was that they had a client named Atelier Blue, and they wanted to design an office space that will deal with design, but also as well deal with wellness. The wellness and the human wellness in our environments are becoming more critical. Today is actually it had spiked a lot because we have to think about the safety and the wellness. But in general, we were always thinking wellness. It was that idea of the balance of play, work, and live. So right now, that just has incited, like picked all the way to the top, because we really need to focus on that human being. How do we protect people? How do we make sure that they feel safe and that they could work in an environment and at the same time feel connected to others and be safe be it's our human right to be safe and we need to feel and make others feel that way so here's a whole project we in the 15 weeks as i said we go through the project objectives we look at the research what are the main points of the research here is like the effects of dogs meditation yoga biophilia which is that relationship that we have with nature and how nature, when it comes into environments, becomes a more healthy environment. So the more plants we have and the oxygen is turning around, we actually have better air. So we want to be able to introduce them to our environments. And of course, the effects of color and how did that impact the, the actual end result and the end user. So here's some inspiration. Bubble diagrams, this is more studies about what those are spaces are, how much square footage do we need, what is primary connection between one space and the other, what's secondary, what are those hierarchies that we see on the space. So this is all like brainstorming, sketching, seeing how we're gonna connect the actual floor plan. How do we create those spaces to connect with one another when there's needed? And how do we build with taking in consideration the end user and your client? Because the client is the one that owns the space and the end user is the one that is going to use the space. So you have to keep in mind those two groups and be able to satisfy them. So here's a reflected ceiling plan, materials, elevation sections. We have the studio class and we have what we call cat class, Revit, and um, Enscape. And those classes are helping you learning the digital, but as well being more strong in the technical aspect of construction drawing. So here's um, the atelier, the final renderings of the space, and you can have a sense of all the final rendering. So this is a full 15 weeks. The only thing that is missing here is the video. So at the end, she will, the student will have a walkthrough of the whole environment. 
This is another project I want to show you. I, this one, I took sections of it. I just want to show you the diversity. So we went from an office commercial space, thinking of wellness. Right now we're in a diabetes treatment center in New Zealand. And it's, it's a little bit more technical based because we need to respond of that healthcare. And here you can see like the sustainability statement. The student was thinking about that sustainability and uh, nutrition while being on, on a diabetes patient and how would that affect the physical activity and so on. A couple of the inspirations she took from, here we start looking at the gross square footage, what are those areas, which ones are we responding to and which one are we gonna focus. So here again, I took sections out. This is a, the nurse station. You could see the details like the cabinets, the reflected ceiling plan that you see over here. I don't know if you can see my mouth, but it's on your right hand. And then of course the furniture plan. And here you see the rendering that shows you what it's gonna look like. And a sample of a patient room, how we would see that patient room. Here you go with the, the actual rendering and then the specification. What kind of furniture do I need for that room? What kind of material? Where would I be using the material? And all that information comes in into what we call construction documents, a big set of documents that will be attached to this in order to build. Another aspect of what we do is a trend research. And here I, it's a quick example of a typical trend research in our industry and how it is just not applied to us, but it could apply to interiors, to fashion, to any type of industry, but it's important and critical that you understand it so you could respond to new research and apply to new environments because that always get connected. What's coming in and trends actually responds into a, a new concept development that then re we relate back into environments. So function of beauty, the different types of archetypes, the generations, the target group, what we call end user, the final person using the actual product, the consumer profile, <clears throat> which is the person that is, um, uh, okay, I apologize, I see that Carla says that we can see your mouth. So the consumer profile is the target consumer that we're gonna look at and we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna try to understand what the needs are. So here's the first trend that was identified, which is called sensorly friendly design. And we'd like to look at what is that means? What's the present of that? What's the future? How do we see and apply that? So we look at things like inclusive environments, sensory sensitivity, empathetic design, and broadening the consumer reach. So we want many different types of consumers to come in and affect that sensory, our senses. The algorithm beauty, which is trend number two, is more about the innovation, the non-invasive, and that personification and how artificial intelligence is affecting our beauty and how do we actually it's personalize it's just for me and it would be effective on me. And then skincare networks, and it's more about the connection, the inclusivity, the consumer base, and the actual proven product that it becomes more productive, more improved. <laughs> Here more uh, the function of beauty experience. Uh, and that concludes the actual, this is more about the retail experience. How would you apply all these trends that you saw into actually the environment? Okay, so we, we went into a beauty trend, we analyzed all these tracks. Now, how do I go in and apply this to an environment? So these are key inspirations that will actually help us develop that. So this class is more about how do we build that research of trends? How do we impact that trend? And then how do we develop that that will impact environments? But we don't go all the way through to look at the environment. And it actually gets you um, to a point where you could actually demonstrate the trends and being able to speak eloquent about how they would impact. This is another example that we do on human uh, factors, which is trying to understand how colors are kind of connected to areas and how cultural changes might affect the way we assimilate color. So in this one, this particular example, the students were looking and analyzing France. And what if, if I would be developing a client that is in France or how do I connect with what their story, the color story is and how would I build that? So we looked at proportion, color, color connection and 
do we see different patterns? How do we relate those patterns? And then how do we create those color stories that communicate and talk to us about that country? And this one is more about the rendering. This is, so I, I took you backwards. This is the freshman year. This is where you actually learn how to render, how to color, how to draft. But we also make sure that you're taking those inspirational images and you're connecting them to your process. And at the same time, that color language that we were talking about comes in and embeds into your final result of the, of the residential. Because the first year, we make sure that you connect with environments that you're more familiar with. So we're going to focus you on residential design. So I want to go a little bit and show you two samples of um, what would be a portfolio for, for senior students? So I'm gonna go here to share one second. Thank you for bearing with me with this beautiful digital life. So I'm gonna start here. So I hope you could see this. I hope you could see the full screen. So this is Molly. Um, Molly is one of our juniors. She's currently going in an internship with, um, she's, oh my God, it's not, uh, Nike is one of the Nike branches, but she's with Nike in, in, in Portland. She's doing it digitally. So she would be doing an online internship this summer. She, she's actually doing it right now. But here you could see where her, um, so her portfolio is right now, how she's projecting herself, how she's showing her projects. You could actually click on the project. You could see the project brief. You could see some of the development of the renderings, the materials. Here's the material sample and palette. And then back again, the space planning. And of course, the rendering of the output of how these environments are finalized and communicate the idea to the client. Um, at the end, if you want the links, I'd be more than happy to share. So this one over here is one of our seniors. Her name is Sophia. And again, you can see all her projects here. Sophia had a minor in fibers. So a lot of her projects had a, um, an influence of the textile, the tactile sensitivity, as well as the idea of color, color contrast, and color language. So you're going to see a lot of that. And she worked on a, a sponsor project with Jeep. This is kind of the sample. And also a sponsor project with wallpaper. And this is her wallpaper that actually is being product, in production. This is another senior student. Her name is Lindsay. Lindsay loves to explore light. She's very inclined about the light exploration and how patterns work. And here's some sample. This was her second year when she was in second year. And uh, Detroit Public Library again, this is the exterior area. And here you could see the branch you work on, which is the Sherwood Forest brand. So I'm gonna take you and show you this video. This is her senior thesis and here's her last video. And I think this one is interesting because she actually explores that collaboration between exhibit and light. So here we go. In fall of 2019, I got some friends together. They're all musicians and extremely talented ones at that. I proposed to them a project, a project in which I designed spaces based off songs they produced during a time of intentionality, all instrumental, all from the heart. Thus, Resonance was born. Resonance is an installation-based gallery centered on the qualities of sound and its ability to evoke a peaceful state of being. With cello, piano, and the human voice, each installation exists in its respective space, allowing visitors to fully immerse themselves in each song. In wake of the COVID-19 crisis, we've been physically separated from reality. No one is or was prepared to deal with a pandemic like this. Having real relationships with others and peace seem far out of reach right now. And for some, that's the only thing they cling to. Residence aims to bring peace to the restless soul through music. If we cannot be together physically, 
and use this time to connect with each musician visually and sonically. Allow yourself to be observant and intentional. Resonate. So thank you very much. I thought um, it was kind of a peaceful ending and I hope we could open this now to questions and we could have, actually have a dialogue about the program. Great, so thanks everybody for uh, hanging with us. Um, we have Prisha who has a question. Um, so Prisha, I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to allow you to speak so you can ask your question. Um, ahead, Prisha. No. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> hi. Um, so I had a question about the different tracks you guys offered, like the different emphasis you have in your program. So, um, oh, okay, wait, it, is the question about 
what are those or I guess is there more to the question am I interrupting um like in relation to interior design so like you gave the example like with sustainability and like color materials um can you talk more about like maybe ethical design yes yeah, so um very good question. Thank you, Prisha. So what we have, we have a couple of um, classes. When I talk about the tracks, so the moment I'm talking about the tracks, we do like, we see what the student actually has um, kind of a higher skill set and we start focusing them on, okay, if it's more exhibit, how would that impact maybe going more in studies about lighting and and looking at more of that space relationship and then the, some supplemental classes that we call elective that would help you to go through that. So when you talk about ethical design, that's more embedded in, in our classes, in our studio classes. And in classes that we'll talk about human factors and there's tons of conversations about how we as designers are being ethical or not. We also, how we apply sustainability. And today, um, the biggest trend that we talk about is well being and how this well um, construction actually standard that is out there now is impacting our industry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move to, I don't know if, I, if you guys could see me right now, but I don't think so because I'm sharing, but I'm gonna move into my headphones for one minute. So I got a little bit of background noise here. Can you hear me well? Not quite yet. All right, Prisha, does that answer your question? Or do you want me to go a little bit more in depth? Did she mute it? Yeah, that answers my question. And I also have another one, if you don't mind. No, of course, that's why I'm here for. <laughs> um, what software did you use for the renderings and the illustrations? So see, um, are you ready? Depends on what I'm showing you. Some of it of what you saw was Enscape. Some of them was um, Unreal. The last one that you saw was on Unreal. That's a different software that I were starting to experiment with. Uh, some of the renderings you saw was SketchUp with B-Ray, but plug-in. So we, we have a, quite a diversity and you learn through the program, you learn throughout the program, um, the different tools and one feeds the other. So actually they connect like what you're learning in SketchUp and, and actually Revit and SketchUp because you could actually build in Revit and then bring it in importing into SketchUp. You could then later that foundation of learning, you could take it into Enscape and understand a little bit more how the software it's, it's doable and how do you move around. The same thing is the same principle applies to uh, Unreal. Unreal is a little bit more complicated. So we're starting to experiment with it and we're seeing actually a very good um, return to it. I, I don't know if you liked the last video, but that's, that was all done in Unreal. Great. So uh, does anybody else have any questions? You're welcome to submit them through the Q&A tool at the um, bottom of your Zoom screen, or you can submit them via the chat. You don't have to talk out loud if you don't want to. I can always read your question out for you if you're more comfortable that way. Um, but I do know that uh, some people have uh, asked us questions like, what is required uh, for an application portfolio for interior design? Um, and so I can talk a little bit about that for you. Um, and I, so, what we're looking for for interior design applicants is um, to essentially show us things that you are excited about. We um, do want you to provide us with an examples of the creative work that you make. Um, and that can range from uh, photography, digital art and design, it can be drawing, it can be, um, it, it can be really anything that you make. We don't have very rigid portfolio requirements. We are looking to see what inspires you, what you've created with that inspiration. Um, we recognize that not every student has access to a lot of art 
classes in their school. So sometimes you get access to one, sometimes you've taken a CAD class, sometimes you've taken um, a drawing class, but not always. And so we're very open to seeing the various kinds of work that you make. And what we're looking for is potential, right? You're coming to CCS to learn skills and we're gonna teach you those. We don't expect you to come in the door as a, you know, a, 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 strong in all areas as a college graduate would. That contradicts the point of going to college. So, um, but what we are looking for is um, you showing us um, how you are invested um, and, and how you are making things and using your own individual ideas to create uh, experiences or people or, or, or things for people to, to live and respond to. So um, we did get another question. Um, the question is, for interior design, do we need to study higher level physics? We don't, but I love physics. I would <laughs> but we don't. We are in the curriculum. It's not required. It's not something that we would be applying to. Uh, you do have to have a basic of um, understanding of math because you do a lot of calculation but no physics. Yeah, and it should be clarified too that in the CCS curriculum, so in the courses that you're required to take for your program, we don't require students to take courses like calculus or um, you know, um, algebra, things like that. Um, those are not requirements that you're going to take at CCS. We do have some general education requirements, but they are um, more typically centered around writing and composition, art history, um, some social science, um, you know, things like that. So um, you're, not you're not going to be taking a lot of uh, calculus or, you know, high level math and things like that uh, in our program. So does anybody else have a question? Um, you can submit that in the chat or in the Q&A uh, panel. Uh, Carla, I want to add to, oh, there's some question. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll let you read the question then. I'll okay, great. So what can I do to prepare in high school as far as courses go? Um, that's a good question. Um, and I, I think we can both maybe answer that. Um, I know that in admissions, when we are reviewing the portfolio for your application, um, you know, we do encourage you to take art classes if you can take them. Um, we, if there are art classes available in your school and you have a choice, we do suggest taking drawing. If you have the option to take digital design, you can take digital design as well or instead of the drawing. So part of what you should know is that as you become a student at CCS, you are going to have some first year courses that you're going to need to complete and that includes drawing um, digital design and things like that. But what we find is that when you're a high school student taking those kinds of classes, it simply helps you, one, create a portfolio, right? Because you're in a structured situation that allows you and sort of pushes you to make work for a portfolio. But also you get a very, you know, a baseline set of skills that you can build on. Um, and so as you come into the college level, you're just that much more experienced and ready to take on the new challenges of taking your drawing or your digital skills to the next level. So it's not required, um, but it certainly helps, right? So if you have the option to take any art classes in high school, you should do that. The other thing that I always have to warn people, <laughs> young people who are in school is please, please have conversations with your counselors and your academic advisors to ensure that they understand that you're planning to go to a college of art and design because they sometimes ask you to take your art classes in your junior and senior year. If you take it in your senior year, it will be too late. You need to create that portfolio while you are a sophomore, uh, even freshman, sophomore, and junior because you start to apply to colleges in your fall of your senior year. So those of you who are juniors right now, you're moving into your senior year and you're going to start applying to college. And so you're gonna to wanna to have some artwork ready to put into a portfolio. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I hope I answered the question. 
I just want to, I'll add to that, oh, that yes, the drafting and, you know, the drafting helps us a lot, whether it's a CAD drafting or manual analog drafting, both of them help a ton. Anything that is model making also helps a ton. So if you, you know, the CAD is actually right now, it's being taught in some high schools. So I would say, you know, beyond the drawing and so on, you do have some CAD classes that are happening at high school level. So I would recommend if you CAD the opportunity, take those, those help. And I also want to remind is like interior design is about, it's a very humanistic discipline. It's we, we go into it. Yes, we like environments. We want to embrace that, but we go because in inside of us, we want to make better environments for others and we want to make them functional and we want to make sure that we, you know, there's always, why do we like those shows when you see the before and after is because that expectation of excitement, of connecting to someone to make, make that little touch to a life that it's going to become better. So I'm going to answer, go into with that opening, I'm going to answer the question that it's in our chat that says, I have heard that there are two types of interior designers, the residential and commercial. Uh, oops, I lost my chat here. Sorry. Um, Carla, you're sharing and I lost the chat. Sorry. I will stop my share. Sorry, sorry. No, no that's I, okay. I got lost pop here. Up? Yeah, it pop up. <laughs> uh, no, I lost it. Interior designers, residential and so, and there are two Talk types of interior designer, together. residential and commercial. Are those, these two topped separately or together? I would say one thing, there's programs that actually just focus on residential design. The, the interior design at CCS focus on the commercial environments. And when I use the word environments, it's because we could be talking about a car interior, or we could be talking about a home, or we could be talking about an office, or we could be talking about an exhibit, a lobby, uh, you know, so there's, there's all these environments that are coming together that we're responding to. The residential and commercial is a division that is very well known in the interior design discipline. But as we move and as generation grows, that is actually blurring because we're seeing a trend in the commercial space, in the office space, where we're seeing environments that feel like home because we need that home play wellness balance. So we see this open kitchens where everybody's collaborating and and now that's going to change a little bit because we do have to think about our cultural patterns and how they're going to impact our environments. But we still are seeing a need to connect with people in a different way, of more of a human to human way. So we're still going to keep that. We just now have to think, okay, how do we get there but include safety on it? Make sure that the end user and whoever is going to engage with that environment, it's safe. So that, that's the biggest caveat right now is that we have to shift our mind to respond to safety right away, but we are still doing an environment, whether it's residential, whether it's commercial, whether it's exhibit, is that space that we're responding to. I hope that answers your question. Well, and just to further clarify, Sandra, your students have opportunities throughout their program to experience and create for all of those different types of spaces and uses and clients and user groups, right? Yes, they do. And we start with residential. The first year you are actually touching residential all the way through because it's the mm -hmm. environment that you're most familiarized with. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, any other questions? Yeah, there's one. Can I include art and design related projects in my portfolio that I have completed on my own time outside of school or on only class? Oh, no, oh, come please, on, we please. love those. <laughs> That's the best kind of work to see. <laughs> of course, anything that inspires you, anything, we want to see that because we, when we're looking at your projects, we're looking how your mind works. We were looking how you relate to that. We, you know, exercises of observation of color, material, all of that, it's, it's telling me how you're thinking, what, what's your next movement. And, and I know it's an, it's an actual final piece, but we actually could read from that so anything please that that's mm -hmm. great yeah I think um, sometimes teachers some which you know I don't fault them but I think sometimes teachers um, when they're guiding you with portfolio are saying you know well make make sure you put that assignment in and you did well on that assignment so put that one in 
And those are fine. You know, if you do have successful projects that you've done in part of classwork, you can include those in the portfolio. But we really, really love to see the things that you do on your own that come from your heart and from what's you know, happening around you and your responses to the world. So yes, please include anything that's of a personal project nature. We love those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's another question, Carla. Yeah, so um, the question is, can you apply for scholarships in, for the interior design department or major? And what I would like to clarify for everybody is that every applicant that applies to the college is automatically reviewed for a scholarship. So no matter what major you're applying to, anybody who applies, we automatically review you for merit-based scholarship. And those scholarships are offered um, essentially with your admission decision. So you would know right away what scholarship we're offering you to enroll in the program. Um, and so, you know, the way CCS works is we don't have extra additional scholarships for this given program or that given program. We really treat all applicants on an equal footing. Um, and so that's to your benefit as a student because you don't have to do anything extra. You don't have to make sure you fill out this extra form or, you know, try to do this or that. All your application materials put you automatically in the review for scholarship. So I hope that clarifies that. Carla, and maybe I could point out that uh, when we offer those sponsor projects, they typically there's a stipend for the students. So there is um, some money that goes towards scholarships for the students. So, so once you're a current student, then there may be opportunities like Sandra's saying tied to the sponsored projects or sponsored studios where you could earn additional scholarship based on the merits of your work and the projects that you're completing. So there are additional opportunities like that. I know within um, the college as a current student, you can also, um, there are a few writing competitions you can submit to. <laughs> Sanders dance, dance like going there. <laughs> um, there are writing competitions you can submit to. There's a, a rug design competition you could submit to. I mean, there are other opportunities like that for current students. Like once you're enrolled, once you're in the program, then those other opportunities can uh, come around each year for you to uh, you know, compete for. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, question here is, what's the best way to put a portfolio together in order to submit to CCS? I've never made one and would like some tips. Um, so. I can tell you the simplest way is to simply make some PDFs of your work. So if you're photographing your work or you have digital files of your work, create a PDF of your work. It does not have to be complicated. Um, your portfolio does not have to center around a central theme. Um, it does not need to be presented in person. Um, it used to be, it used to be that way, you know, you have your big portfolio case and you had to take your originals in and none of the colleges work like that anymore. We just don't have the capacity to do that. It's also easier for you to submit your work online. So um, when you photograph your work, that's the biggest thing. If it is something that is um, three-dimensional um, or something that you have to photograph, like a painting, something like that, just make sure you're photographing that in an evenly lit space and that it's in focus. I don't know how many times you get stuff out of focus, but so make sure it's in focus. And then, um, but if it's digital work, um, you know, you can just carefully prepare a PDF file that shows the various pieces of that project. And, um, you know, that, that's as complicated as it needs to be. I was gonna say, you know, um, we have Instagram and Facebook page. I would recommend you follow them. They could inspire you to create new projects. There's, we post the student projects, the uh, student material explorations and developments. So maybe those will help you to inspire yourself into, okay, if I wanna do this project outside of class, what can I do and things like that. So it's, it's Sandra, a good can source you put of- those in the chat? Put those yeah. uh, handles in the chat. Yeah, I mean, and those are great suggestions of how to, you know, if you wanted to um, take some examples of the student work and then kind of use that as a guideline for you to create your own project that's um, not a school assignment, but something that you want to do on your own. That's a really great way to go about making some work uh, for a portfolio. Okay, uh, let's see. 
Great. I don't know if there are any other questions. We're just hitting an hour, so I don't want to hold you on here much longer unless anybody has any additional questions. Um, and we really, really appreciate you guys joining us. Um, Sandra has put the Instagram link down in the chat, so you should uh, follow and check out all the great work that they're putting out there regularly. Um, and we really, uh, like I said, we do appreciate you coming in this uh, visit with us this evening. Um, so I think Sandra, any parting words? I know I couldn't see the face. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I couldn't get everybody's, uh, image, uh, video up there. Um, we'll work on that for next time, but we really appreciate you guys asking the questions and, um, and coming and, you know, and if you ever come up with a question, I guess I should put in the link, my email in case uh, something comes up, you're more, I'm more than happy to see, to hear about you, to, you could reach out to me. The other thing is like, when you come to, if you decide to come to CCS, think about this as we are your partners through your journey. We're going to be there all the way. I'm, I'm, very connected to my students. I actually have a bigger family that I started with at CCS. It's huge because now my students are having kids, they're getting married. So we want to build that network. We want you to be connected. We want you to keep keep you in this big family. But again, think about that. It's a partnership as we go through the four years and we wanna make sure that you're out there in the industry doing the best work there is. So we're gonna put all the efforts for you to be to become that person. Great. So uh, I did uh, put Sandra's uh, email address in the chat there. If anybody wants to email her questions directly, um, you're welcome to do that. And certainly if you have more questions about admissions, you can email the admissions office at admissions at college for creative studies edu. Um, and we can talk more about portfolio. If you want a pre-review of your portfolio, we're happy to do that, give you feedback before you submit it to, uh, with your application. We do that all the time. Don't be nervous or afraid about that. We're simply here to help you. So um, again, thank you so much. You'll get the recording of this video tomorrow. And um, we hope you might join us uh, at our virtual open house on June 10th. Um, we are hoping that we will have live video feeds for everybody in that so that there can actually be chat rapport. So take a look for that on our um, visit page of our website, which is collegeforcreativestudies.edu slash visit. And we hope to see you around soon. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thanks, Sandra. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>